Hi guys, <laughs> welcome to my channel. I'm Angela. Happy Wednesday, family. Happy Wednesday, fam bam, or whatever day it is where you are. I hope you guys are having an amazing, amazing day today. I wanted to come really quickly and give you a word that God is speaking in this hour and wanted me to deliver. Uh, you know, I say quickly, it's a, it's a quick word, but it's a powerful word uh, that God is speaking in this hour. As always, I tell you to please take the word back to God in prayer for confirmation, okay? Any word that I give you or any other servant of God gives you, make sure you're taking those words back to God in prayer for more confirmation and more revelation of that word in your quiet time, in your quiet place. Also on this channel, I'm going to continue to say it. I encourage you to have your own relationship with God. Yes, what God is saying is important, but what's more important is that you have your own relationship with God, your own intimate relationship with God. He speaks to you just like he speaks to me and God desires that and I encourage it, okay? More than ever, we all need to have an intimate relationship with God. We all need God, okay? So guys, I want to go ahead and get into the word. If you see me look down, I'm just looking at my um, looking at my notes. Uh, I'm going to read uh, what God wanted me to speak about. Uh, I'm just reading the way that he gave it to me. Um, and then I'll go into what he was speaking about in my quiet time with him. Okay. He stated, my people must come out from amongst them and follow me. I am much greater than than the pleasures of this world. Let go of your distractions and focus on me. Guys, God has been speaking a lot uh, lately in my quiet time about many of his people, many of his children are so focused and so distracted about, you know, of the things of this world, whether that's television, whether that's, you know, uh, money, whether it's, you know, just house, cars, people, um, just being so caught up in all the distractions, news, fake news, you know, you're so caught up in that where you've taken your eyes off of God and God is saying, stay focused on me, come out from amongst them, come out from amongst them and focus on me. You can't, you know, you can't dibble and dabble, have your way and have, you know, be with God part time and be in the world part time. You have to be all the way in with God. You know, God wants you. He desires you. And he's asking all of us to stay focused on him. The things of this world is temporary. You know, it's instant. Everybody wants instant gratification. But God is not, you know, it, it, he's not about that. And everybody want, to, want it now, want to be pleased now, want that, in, you know, just that instant gratification. And God is saying, no, you're going to choose me, you know, all the way or don't choose me at all. And God is asking for his people to really focus on him, focus on what he's asked of you you know, to do and just focus on really just spending time with him in your word, in prayer. God desires that. And God is saying, focus on him, turn back to him, turn back to your first love. You know, we get so distracted and the world, I'm not perfect. I've been there where I get distracted and, and sometimes overwhelmed with the things of the world, but I have to, you know, reel it back in and know that God is my strength. God is my peace. And I, and I have to, you know, and we get that from being in the word of God. We get that from being in the presence of God in prayer. We get that strength. We get that, you know, that peace that we need to persevere you know, as God say, he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So he's always there. It's just us sometimes move away, you know, move away from him because we're, we're so distracted with something else. And God is saying, come back, come back, spend time with me. 
don't have the pleasures. He said, I am much greater than the pleasures of this world. And he is. <laughs> and he is. I can't stress it enough how awesome God is. How amazing he is. He's deserving of the praise and the honor. And he's such a good God. A loving God. A humble God. But God never moves away from us. We move away from him. And God is saying, come back, focus on me. Come out of the world, come out from amongst them and focus on me. You know, God wants us to focus more on him. And, you know, this world is, you know, it's temporary. This world is so temporary. And I always say that we're just, we're just, you know, passing by. We're passing by. This is not our, you know, be all. It, it's not. This is just something temporary, but eternity is forever. Eternity is forever. And we want to, that's our goal. That's our goal. Our goal is for eternity. Our goal is to, to, to develop that relationship with God. Our goal is to serve one another. Our goal is to love one another. Those are the goals. Those are the intents of God. Not to follow money and pleasure and, you know, and the different things of this world. Not that he does not want us to have those things. God will give us the desires of our heart when we're focusing on him. Those things will come. As long as we focus on God, we keep our hearts and our mind on God. Focusing on him. And God is calling us to focus. Don't get so distracted and don't allow this world to, you know, to, to plant, you know, the distractions of fear, the, dis, you know, distractions to plant anxiety. Um, don't allow this world to distract you. Don't allow the news to distract you. Don't allow the fake news to distract you. Don't allow the news to distract you. Stay focused. Stay focused on God. He's going to be with us no matter what is going on out there. God is going to be with us. He's going to be with us. He's going to walk with us. He's going to be with us. But we have to keep our eyes on him. And it's so much. And, you know, he's been speaking a lot about, you know, just building a new foundation in the body of Christ planning, you know, a, a solid foundation because it's so shaky. It's so much going on, even in the church and some churches, we have some amazing Bible based uh, churches that actually teach <laughs> the word of God that is filled with the Holy Spirit. We have, we do have some great churches, but then there's some, then I told you that God is, you know, he's really tearing down in government and in in the church government and the pulpit he's doing you know the great reversal god is about to clean house and you're seeing it literally fall apart in the front of our very eyes the way the church <laughs> woo the way some churches are behaving i have to be honest I had to pray to God that please don't allow anger and a spirit of anger or the spirit of frustration to seep in and stay there because you hate what God hates and you love what God loves when you walk with God and to see people, some people make a mockery out of God and disrespect God the way that they do. It hurts me. It hurts me. And it frustrates me. God don't deserve this. He's such a good God. He's such an amazing God. And it literally hurts me to see the things that God had, that just the mockery and the disrespect in the pulpits and even just in the body of Christ in general. You know, it hurts. It hurts because God is so awesome and he is our creator. So, you know, why is everything so much against God, against Christ? Why? And 
you know, I was saying that, uh, you know, I told you guys and I shared with you that I God pulled me out of the church or called me out of the church. It's been like uh, like a year and a half now. And it was my first time going to a new church on Sunday. I had to pray. <laughs> I had to pray before I got out of the car like, Lord, please, please, Lord, don't make me have to walk out of church. Please. You know, I prayed, Lord, if you don't want on my way there, if you don't want me to go to this church and I prayed the night before, if you don't want me to go to this church, if you don't want me to, you know, visit this church, please let me know, God, let the Holy Spirit let me know and I won't go. And I end up, you know, God was okay with it. I end up going on Sunday. Uh, back into the doors, you know, I always tell you, I enjoy worshiping and praising God with other believers. And I just enjoy that, you know, and like I said, it's not all churches that's bad, but I had to really pray before I went in, like, God, please, please don't let them say nothing crazy. Please don't let it be shenanigans. And it's sad that you have to really pray and, and really pray about it so hard now more than ever because you're getting all of these different things in church and it's more for self it's more for fame it's more to be seen it's more for followers when is it going to become for christ when is it going to become more for god than for show when is it going to become you know more for God than 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 followers. You can get across to young and old without it being a whole production or a whole show or or just foolishness. Just focus on God. Focus on the word of God, the teaching of God, the repentance. God needs people to repent right now. God is calling for repentance right now. And that's what we need to focus on. Not the foolishness. And luckily, church service went great. It was powerful. The spirit of the Lord was in there and it was a great service. And I'll be back Sunday, but it went back. It it was great. But the simple fact that I had to pray so hard <laughs> before I went in there, like, please don't let them just have foolishness. Don't let it be. Just let me learn. Let me let, you know, let them te And it was. It was, it was a great word, really sort of to the fact that what I, what God has been speaking all week that I'm delivering today. And, uh, you know, really about us, uh, the service was really about us not trying to, you know, worry about our own salvation, but worrying about other people's salvation as well. That is a part of our job. That is a part of our calling is making sure that we are, you know, spreading the gospel when we can you know, um, everywhere that we go. So yeah, I, I, I get so, um, you know, just so frustrated, uh, about that and so hurt because God is so good. And it's just like, why, you know, why I would never understand. I never have, and I never would. And, you know, the enemy is working through people. You know, this is a spiritual battle. I always tell you, this is a spiritual battle. This is a spiritual battle. And, and you know, the enemy is going to try his best to, to distract us, keep us from praying, keep us out of the word of God, keep us from fasting. If he can keep you from those things that keep you strong, that gives you peace, if he can keep you from the word of God, from prayer, from fasting, then he don't really have to do anything because you have, you know, you, you still in the world, <laughs> you still of this world. And God is saying, no, come out from amongst them. You're going to have to come if you're you're around people that is not of Christ and you've planted that seed and they still have not changed. That's another thing that God remove yourself. That's something else he talked about removing yourself. You can plant a seed. You can try to get, you know, spread the gospel. But if you're around people on a continuous basis and they are not changing, they're, they're not trying to change, they're not trying to walk this walk, then you have to separate. 
It may hurt, but you have to separate. And that is what God is saying in this hour is that the distractions have to end and we have to focus on him. Uh, he led me to, I have two scriptures, guys, that I want to read. Um, the first one is 2 Corinthians 6.17. I'm reading from the NLT, okay? It says, therefore, come out from amongst unbelievers and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things and I will welcome you and I will be your father and you will be my sons and daughters says the Lord Almighty. So guys, you have to come out from among them. Anyone that is not willing to, to walk this walk and you've tried to plant the seed and they're still doing things uh, of this world, you have to separate. You have to separate. And also, uh, what other one? 1 John 2.16. 1 John uh, 2.16. I thought I had it. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure. A craving for everything we see. And pride in our achievement and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from the world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. You will have eternity forever. You choose God, you will have this. Like I said, this is temporary. These things that we collect here are temporary. But eternity is forever. It's forever, guys. And God is calling us to him. And I open the floor to anyone who, uh, you know, don't have a personal relationship with God. Just confess your sins. Repent and turn to God. Allow him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. It's nothing that you or I have done so bad that God will not receive us if we repent, confess, and give our will, our will for his will. God will, God will, he will welcome us with open arms. Just try him. God is good. He's amazing. And we cannot make it in this world, guys, without him. It's no way possible we can make it in this world without him. We need him. And I desire him. I want him. He's too good. He's too good. And I just desire, he don't want religion. God wants relationship. Remember that it's not about religion. Know that it's about an intimate relationship with God. And that's what he desires. Guys, we are, these are truly coming to the last days. And like I always tell you, if you can't see it, you don't want to see it. If you can't see it all around you, you don't want to see it. And this is the time to turn to God and turn away from anything that does not please God. And get ready and for all of us to prepare, prepare for the coming of the Lord because it's near. It's near and we have to all be ready. So guys, that is the word today. I just pray... <laughs> I just pray that, you know, I just pray that we give each and every one of us our hearts wholeheartedly to God. He's so amazing. He's so amazing. And he never turns away from us. It's always us. So turn back to God. Refocus. God is saying refocus and some just focus, <laughs> you know, on him. Focus on him. God is the way, the truth, and the life. And he's the only way to have eternal life. So guys, that is the word today. Oh. <laughs> That's the word today. You know what I'm going to say. Keep shining. Keep being the light that you are because you are the light. Keep loving each other and being kind and showing compassion, okay? 
Don't conform to this world or the agendas of it. Stay awakened to the things and the devices of this world. This is a spiritual battle that we're fighting and we have, we'll do better when we fight it together, okay? So let, let's not allow them to divide us, but let's continue to walk in unity and love each other and be kind. The world needs it, okay? God loves you unconditionally, and I love you. Until next time, I see you guys, God willing, okay? All right, bye-bye.